All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Things are still attempting to load. Anyways, welcome everyone to another live stream. We're visiting Viewer Railroads, and this one's a, a bit of a, a special one, if I put an asterisk on it, because I'm joining several of my friends from Colorado uh, at their Colorado and Southern slash DSP and PE server. So um, I'm the, uh, the Rio Grande guy, and I'm f surrounded by anti Rio Grande people who were saying that it's evil. So um, they, might, uh, they might vote me off the island, but it'll, it'll be good fun at least. The Rio Grande is evil. <laughs> so, so when we vote you off the island, instead of putting out a torch, we put out your firebox. Something like that, yeah. Drop a fuse, fusible plug. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh, oof. Excessive po foam penalty is fusible plug drops. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Will, did you send me the uh, the minis work on uh, Facebook? Is that right? Yeah. Let me grab that so people can see your uh, your level. I haven't even looked at it. Oh, uh, no, I, I, uh, do you do you need I, me to send it again? No, I can I can grab it. Okay. Um, I did look at it last night actually, but not too much. But we'll uh, I'll display it here on the uh, on the stream so folks can see what we are we're looking at as soon as it loads. If we're competing for loading here. <laughs> Oh, uh, we've uh, we've accidentally gone recursive. There we go. <laughs> oh, then this this uh, <laughs> my window's all goofed up. Here we go. Very professional live stream this Sunday morning here. <clears throat> okay, so um, as I can see right away from looking at the minis, where you guys have lots of locomotives and cars, um, so this is going to be another popcorn session, I think. <laughs> We only have 18 locomotives. Only 18. Okay, so it's not as bad as the the, the first one that I did. Uh, I think they had 40 locomotives, and it was like, yeah, oh my no. god. You can only buy so many moguls and so many Class 70s and so many Eurekas before they become redundant. <laughs> You're not wrong. And they start adding new things, then I'll buy new locomotives. There you go. So long as they're not real grand locomotives. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, be, uh, oh pained. DSP and P <laughs> prototypes, preferably. We'll, we'll even accept UN it's stuff bogus. here, just not. <laughs> oh Lake, man. Lake Tahoe Railway and Transportation Company is also acceptable. Brutal. They'll, they'll take Colorado you in it, but not the Grand. Ouch. Yeah, Porter, Colorado Central Porter Bells are good. Yeah, I'll say it. I'll take a Florence and Cripple Creek Golden Circle Forney too. You guys are real special here, aren't you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. We work for railroads, so that's that. That, that, that is a given. Yeah. Oh, it we looks are like all railroad employees. Indeed. So, uh, uh, apologies in advance, stream for anything that may happen. Um. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it looks like you guys laid the the fun way around the the uh, southwest corner of the map to the uh, ironworks and refinery. That, that's pretty. That was redone recently. It felt like they were right on top of each other, which they pretty much are. Yeah, they they really are. They're pretty close. So going going around that way makes it more fun. Indeed, and it looks like you guys have followed a lot of the classic alignments. So um, it's almost like you're real railroaders, and you tried to make a good railroad. Is what it looks like. So we we, we were joking about this the other day. It was we we all work for functioning railroads, so we built our railroad in the game world like a functioning railroad. <laughs> there you go. That's without funny. large yards, though. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's there's not too many like there's no like ridiculous class one uh, yeah, standard gauge freight yard yeah. anywhere. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Someone said I need to uh, turn off my preview in OBS and that'll help increase performance. And uh, that's a setting somewhere I'm sure that I can turn on. <laughs> and since you're back at the freight depot, we do have an abomination over there that predates the existence of the engine houses behind you. Oh boy, I'm excited to go look at that. I'm actually quite proud of it. I know Jimmy's the one that built it, but... Alright, preview's disabled, here we go. Oh lordy, look at this. 
Uh, so, engine House version one and Engine House version two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, this this looks like a lot of time went into it, and it does not look bad. That's it's funny. also bomb proof, so I was gonna say it's made out of uh, concrete walls that are like you know twelve feet thick. Yeah, we won't have to worry about nuclear war. We'll just hide in the engine house. Seriously, <laughs> that's great. And who do we have in here? DSPNP, the glow stick. Is that an actual name of a DSPNP engine? Are you guys being that historical? Oh no no no! no. Come come this way. Uh, so we we gotta, have we a lettering see where it scheme. Started. We have a lettering scheme for our four four O's. Okay, we've got the light bulb. Yeah. So uh, uh, Eureka, when you have a good idea, you say Eureka. Well, in uh, Despicable <laughs> Me, he says light bulb. And so then that just came off as all of the Eurekas are named after light sources. That is, that's very silly. I approve. We've got uh, light bulb, glow stick, chandelier, and candle. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, yeah, you guys, um, I'm getting remarkably better performance on your guys' save than I am on the uh, that other map that I went and looked at. <clears throat> I've got a, I've got about 60 FPS right now, which is just beautiful. That's good. I'm on the I-70 corridor, so... <laughs> I don't have fiber optic in the house, but uh, He's only the I seventy corridor. Beautiful. All right. Well, uh, what what do we need to go see? What do we need to go do on the railroad today? Well, I think uh, we're gonna go up to the uh, logging camp and load some logs first. All right. Well, I am I'm on the uh, <laughs> the light bulb. So. <laughs> hey, Christian, could you go throw switches ahead of us? You're lined out of the yard already. I oh, did that oh, when oh. I left. Beautiful. <clears throat> Do I have rolling line? Yes. Caught you streaming. Yes, hello. Have I tried out railroads line line extended? No, I still haven't. I need to. Live stream is temporary. Video is forever. Video wait. This is just easy transportation to the log camp. Need... Yes. The, uh... Or well, to the sawmill. Makes sense. And we, we are getting a little popcorn, but not, not too super bad. Good morning. And good morning indeed. It and still is morning. Thank you. Good iron out of the yard. Good iron, good iron. Oh, Will, you're going to be so proud of me. I'm actually uh, taking real G-Core classes, and I'm going to get my 240 and 242 card. I'm going to be a real... I'm going to be a real boy! Oh. <laughs> real, real railroading? Something like that. <laughs> Just remember, you got to have a family at each terminal. Na naturally. <laughs> I don't know if we can call Shehalis a terminal. I'm pretty sure it's a spur, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's still a neat area, though. Indeed. This is pretty. You guys have also have uh, somewhat realistic right-of-way clearing where you've got, what, like, you know, 50 feet on either side? In most places. <laughs> so this is the original uh, main line we built. So as a result, it's not the greatest. It's a little squiggly. That's it's, fine. It's it's functional. We're notorious for places other than this for totally just ripping everything up and starting over again. That uh, that sounds all too familiar. Except it's better when you can make people do it for you. I think. But, you know. <laughs> and of course, Jimmy was the uh, the one who went bankrupt clearing all the trees. <laughs> was back was... in back oh, in the yeah. day when the trees cost money. Hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was what five grand in the hole or something. Yeah, like that. Something like oh my that. goodness, you actually went bankrupt. I'm never gonna finally financially recover from this. Oh, well, I cheated. I uh, put a firewood depot across from the cordwood of the logging camp and just used the money printer. <laughs> load a cordwood car, unload a cordwood car, load a cordwood car, unload a cordwood car. Pretty much. I think you spent four hours doing that one night, though. Yes, I did. Oh my yeah, goodness. That's how I afforded the class seventy that I bought. How okay, dare so you, you don't guys. actually need to run trains, so we're following <laughs> precision schedule railroading here. Don't bother running the trains, just make money. Yeah, sell sell the commodities to yourself to convert them into firewood and then also get paid for it. What? Tonnage not... first, safety last. Indeed, tonnage first, safety last. See, the, see, folks, I'm not the only one that's a little special. Uphill slow, downhill fast. Tonnage first, safety last. That is the motto. Um... Canadian Rail Fanner asks in chat, when will the planned passenger cars video go out? I realized I didn't check Premiere on it, 
Uh, so it will premiere in an hour and 45 minutes, which is 1 p.m. PST, 2 p.m. Colorado time for you folks. If you want to see the video for the tech tree of all the passenger cars, that'll, that'll be coming out today. And we give some just, spoilers I'm on... I'm happy there's some DSP and P stuff on it. There's there's a lot of DSP and P stuff. Uh, we set it up so that you could basically make a full passenger train, either as CNS, DSP, and P, or Rio Grande, or whatever. But they didn't include my Uinta boy, which I'm very sad about. So, I've, I've petitioned Armagon to let us put the, the 50 in so we could have, you know, a passenger tank hauling one car up at Moron's Castle. <laughs> A lot of people are excited for the passenger cars. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of uh, extra special caboose hops with like six cabooses uh, running as passenger trains in um, the Herod's Online Discord, which is a little cursed, but I, I get it. I get the desire. It's, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's understandable. People want to have passenger trains and, and all that. And once we get the, the new spline update, Eureka will be able to go 7 billion thousand miles an hour, and, and it'll actually yes. have a purpose. So. Well, and I was saying to... Uh, Will and a few of the other guys last night. I was like, so once we get the Eureka to go, you know, super crazy fast, can we get a temporary DeLorean so we can recreate that scene? <laughs> we, we do need a DeLorean. You, you, you and everyone else. I think that that is one of the comments I see the most often on everything I do is, when, when can we do the Back to the Future memes? We'll have to scale one down. We'll have to get a model. Because it's three foot gauge, right? It's a kid car. <laughs> a kid car. There you go. Has anyone fired up the Heisler to go to the logging camp? Uh, I have not. I've been riding with you. Yeah. Speaking of which, you want me to spot you in? No, no, I'm just going to park it on the siding, and then we'll go over to the Heisler to go up to the log camp. And if you guys do that, I guess I'll start loading this up and take it down to the southern branch. I'm already on the loading track for the... Yeah, he's, he's got it. Uh, no worries, I'll, I'll stand by. So we're going to go over to the Heisler uh, on the other side of the pond here. We, we have our locomotives assigned to specific <laughs> locations. Like a real railroad. Well, and some of it was we had we had designed the logging branch to work with the porters, and then we realized that once you load ten cars up with uh, logs, the porters can't actually stop. So <laughs> well, that's why th the that is why there are the handbrakes. That is why there are handbrakes on the cars. You know this. Yeah, I know. But are uh, you yeah, are you that wish. privileged with your automatic air, you snob? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's quite the, the, has a good quite name the train too. going. The light bulb. What, what's the naming scene? Oh, well, you, uh, you've gone historic with the, the moguls, I take it. I do, uh, kind of. The Como, number six. Do you have the nine so we can accidentally blow it up or break stay bolts? We Oops. do have a nine, and oh, it good. is a mogul. Good. Uh, it's, it's, that one's named Silver Plume. Rusty and Dusty. You can run Dusty on your server? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> many, many jokes have been had at Dusty's expense. I believe it. We, we did want to uh, get another Betsy, but rename it Busty. <laughs> that was before they updated it to where it doesn't haul anything anymore. That's fair. Apollo, the Apollo 13. I like it. It's a high slur. What do you want? Well, I mean, it, it should be going to space, so. It sounds like it's going to space when you open the throttle too much. Well, I mean, the, that, the that is a logging worse. engine, so. The climax wasn't worse until after the uh, adhesion factor changed. <clears throat> Jimmy, what are you loading these cars with? Uh, mostly lumber, a few beams. You want these last, like... Heisler is loud. It is a crime that that whistle is on a Heisler. <laughs> right, the best whistle in the game, and it's on a Heisler. It's a great Northern Five Chime, which was just one of the few recordings we had that was uh, free access. So, but... Why, why QMA chose to put it on the Heisler, I'm not sure, but... Uh, it, it should be on the Class 70. It should. We really should, because that would make me feel a lot better about everything. Alright, uh, number 16 at the coal mine has a good IT. Train is ready to roll for you guys. Oh, 
How exactly do you do an IT without air brakes? Yeah, really. Well, I think what you do is you set the handbrakes, look and make sure they're actually set, and then release the handbrakes one by one. Well, not only that, but I also would classify a good IT as all the couplers actually work. <laughs> they didn't spring load and I didn't lose a car testing it out while making sure it was hooked up. I'm not sure I've seen a, a track run this way, actually, to the logging camp, now that I'm thinking about it cutting off to the right. This is kind of neat. It works pretty nice because it runs straight through. It does, yeah. Less, a lot less haphazard, except for that last little bit of... Well, I guess it's been a while since I've been on, so... That last little incline originally getting into the logging camp is a bit of a mess, but... Oh, that's long gone. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 we're down to 1% now. Because we, me and Jimmy related after the physics update so that we could use the porters... Uh, before we realize that even then you can't stop. Well, I mean, yeah, if you lay your curves wide line. enough, it's not a problem. 5% grades. That'll do, Jimmy. It's a gravity assist on the downhill. Is there a way for me to run this game at a really nice quality without making my PC light on fire? Yes, water cooling. I recommend it. <laughs> you may want to take Keep a, a fire extinguisher with you. Look a bit to stop. Not sure if it'll un accidentally unload this one. Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, viewers are remarking that the train is not really glitching that much. For how much rolling stock you guys have, it's surprisingly decently smooth. Yeah, we actually have quite a bit, so I'm surprised. I mean, it's running fine for me, but I'm hosting, so. Of course, yeah. The answer I would have in response to the graphics thing, turn your anti-aliasing down to low. That'll do, Como. A lot of folks are asking about the spline update, of course, and I, we still don't have a date. We've been doing local testing uh, on the dev branch, and it's progressing. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to it because, I mean, we're it's really overhauling everything about how trains interact with the track, which is, I mean, the cause of the problem. If we were trying to do a car-to-rail collision check and then car-to-car -car collision check, and that adds up really fast when you start adding lots of rolling stock, which is why we get what we get. So, coming up with a new system, still allow for all the derails and all the all the physics that we have, but uh, with a smarter way to have the cars be on the track. So, especially, especially, I mean, half the fun of this is if you go too fast, you derail. And we That's will important. be able to go really fast in the upcoming. Our our test train for uh, stability purposes goes 125 miles an hour. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Wow. So, what is so, it, the Excella? On narrow much. gauge. It's I the, don't it's, think any narrow gauge engine has ever gone that fast. Um, Save for ones rolling down into the canyon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> They've never gone that fast it. while on the track. <laughs> I was going to say it, Mark, but you beat me to it. <laughs> 346. <laughs> well, she didn't go like like spiraling out of control. She's probably doing like forty and then tipped over and then buried herself in the. Very fast for the section she was in. That's very fast. Oh, like thirty-seven inch drivers. Thirty-six. Ew. Yeah, I've been on three forty-six going about twenty-two miles an hour. Don't ask me why. I wasn't running, um, and that feels like light speed. That is ridiculously fast in that thing. The, the fastest I've gotten up to is about 18. 26. I've, uh, I've gone uh, 24 at the Cumbres and Toltecs, the fastest I've been. So, Unofficially, I've gone 26 at the loop. Unofficially. Oops. Unofficially. Folks are asking... I'm not uh, allowed to say who was running. <laughs> uh, well, you can't. No, we're not doxing people here. Uh, speaking of doxing, people are asking who we're talking with. These are some Colorado Railroad friends of mine. Um, you can introduce yourself as, as much as you want. We've got 123 people watching, so you may not want to give out too much info about yourself, but feel free. I like if you... long walks on the beach. I like <laughs> being spoiled with money. Oh, you are a railroader. Got it. I'm working in the wrong type of railroading <laughs> to be, to be uh, demanding money. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> No, uh, my name's Will. I uh, I work for the Georgetown Loop, and I've been up there for about eleven years now. That's right. It's, you've been up there a long time. I work on I work on steam engines for a living. Yeah, he gets paid to do it. Madman. And Mark does it for free. I do it for free because I I more brain damage than he is. I think. Although that might be a contest. I don't know. 
guess uh, I'll go next. Uh, I'm Christian. I also work at the Georgetown Loop. I've been there for four years. I'm Jimmy. I'm usually the court jester in uh, Mark's streams in the comments. Uh, I work for the Pikes Peak Cog Railway. Your friend, my friend Jimmy, that works at the Cog. Yes. I've never met him. <laughs> That'll do number thirteen. All right. Well, and I'm Matt. I work for the uh, Georgetown Loop part time during the summer. I'm coming up on season eight. And I also work on the steam locomotives uh, fireman and occasionally get to get in that uh, hogger seat and run up the hill and have a good time. Okay, so we've got a bunch of railroaders here, and they're a bunch of railroaders that like CNS equipment, which I guess, you know, that it's explains... Uh, <coughs> how many CNS engines survived? What condition are they in? And how many Rio Grande engines survived? And what condition are they the in? The Rio Grande engines survived because the Rio Grande was too cheap to buy anything new. The CNS engines were in good right. shape, so they went to Alaska, where everything went to die in World War II. Well, that's that's fair. <laughs> and the also survived simply because they made an abomination called the Galloping Geese. Well, that's the real Grand Southern. That's, that's the RGS. Mean. That we we are not affiliated with them, so nobody <laughs> claims that. Forty-one, forty-two. Cough, cough. Cough, <laughs> cough, cough. Yeah. Mm, mm. So, um, folks are asking, when are we going to get speedometers? I, I'm surrounded by a bunch of railroaders who have dealt with this equipment, and I've preached this a bunch. Will, have you ever seen a Speedo in one of the engines that you've operated or been around? Yes! Good God, we which had, one? We we installed uh, GPS speedometers in the engines at the loop last year. Did you really? <laughs> it's actually kind of nice. One of the diesels and two of the steam engines. That's not historic. How dare you? The historic fabric has been ruined. I had two, number 13. These are Guatemalan 280s. They're not historic to Colorado, and they're great engines. Well, that's fair. We're just, we're just making them better. One more, number 13. And it's actually really not that bad. Um, it's kind of nice at a reference glance, but it's half car. Like Will, you've been running them as long as you have. They're more or less just a glance reference. Ten foot. Yes. Really need them. And that'll do. They're, they're, they're definitely not necessary for running steam locomotives, but they don't hurt. Yeah, this I mean, they certainly don't hurt, but I mean, historically, I mean, most they of never the locomotives didn't have them. I mean, shoot, Just I was... Anything uh, narrow gauge definitely didn't have them. Honestly, honestly, when you're at the controls of the steam locomotive, you can get a pretty good gauge for how fast you're going. Look, Just by look down, down, look down, down, count the ties. Just listening, you can tell when the locomotive is trying to go a million miles a minute. Yeah, if, um... If you're a super like uh, math and engineering and music foamer like some of us, uh, you can also do some calculations based on the driver size and the number of chuffs you have to calculate precisely how fast you're going in beats per minute um, and then uh, argue with people about it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> There was a there was the big hem haul when the we were fixing the track at the museum, um, where they put a, an official speed limit of eight miles an hour on us. This four ninety one wanted to wanted to put the track where uh, where it didn't want to be, of course. Um, and so I think Jack was still there, and Jack was like, "You you can't you can't go faster than eight. You have to go eight. And so I counted it out and figured out what the beats per minute four four ninety one chuffing with forty four inch drivers, you know how how much you needed to do. Um, and it was like, bup, 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 bup. and I, I just timed it, got my metronome out, figured it out, got the internal pulse going. I had two cars, number 13. Um, <laughs> and they're like, you're going too fast. And I was running through the station. I'm like, no, I'm not. And Jack was on the back with the GPS and it was 8.0 miles an hour. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So mega foamer. Anyways, mega foamer, mega one more 13. <laughs> You've got a flat car named 007 lulls. Okay, and the 21 Raffle, and the 6969. <laughs> That'll do 13. I'm just now seeing that you guys have... Uh, the, the, yeah, there are some meme flats. That was <laughs> memed some flat car. cars. That's the one I put in there. Which one, 007? Uh, 6969. 69, that's good. When I worked for BNSF, I always wanted the 6969 to come to the shop, and it never did. I was sad. I had the 340 and the 346 show up, though. BNSF or BNSF? The, the, no, the, the BNSF. The bean sniff. Yeah. And somehow they were in worse shape than the real 346 and 340. 
Eh, class one. That's just that yeah. goes with the territory. It, it does. Burn them up, spit them out. Yeah, so folks are asking that they'd like a speedo for the sake of the game. And for the sake of the game, uh, my viewpoint at this point is with the driving UI, I think we should just put like all of the info in there and just go with it. Like, how much water is in the tender? Not correct, but you know that would be just nice to have. Make it easy. Put a speedo on. Make it easy. If you're if you're driving in the UI, it's already not like realistic, quote unquote. Anyways, just put the darn info in there and go. So, speaking from experience as a fireman, I do we do have technically a sight glass on the tank on the locomotives of the loop, so that we can glance back and see if there is water in the tender. So that's an FR. That's an FRA requirement. That is an FRA requirement. Um. I had two, number 13. Um, I, I will say that um, 346 doesn't have a dipstick. 20 has a dipstick, but when you pull it out, it hits the cab roof, so you can't do anything with it. Uh, <laughs> Clear plastic piece of pipe. Really easy. It is really easy. Uh, one more car, number 13. Half car. Oh, boy. Oh, you got a good question in chat. I'd like to hear yours, uh, your answers to this. About another 10 foot there, 13. That'll do. Um, what is a foamer? <laughs> well, this is a loaded question. This oh, is a loaded no. question. Let's um, let's get the uh, the railroader's opinion answer first, and then we'll give a, a, a more thoughtful answer after we've um, gone gone through the the, uh, the fun definitions we use in the industry, if you will. <laughs> oh no! Um, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Foamers are, are people who like trains very, very, very much. That was very PC of you. That was very PC of you. Interesting little trivia for you. The uh, Swiss guys apparently have their own term for that, which is Bumfer Kisser. <laughs> That's beautiful. What's it translate to? I think that is actually Bumper Kisser is literally what it translates to. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, so uh, I believe the term foamer comes from someone who foams at the mouth when they see a train. They get that excited is uh, that the where the uh, origin of the term is. But it's uh, I think that's where it started. It's the, it's the slang term for uh, a rail enthusiast, or if you're really pretentious, a ferroequinologist. I think is the term that people have started oh, no. using. Which is, I mean, that's 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 a thing. <laughs> But um, we're all guilty of being foamers here anyways ourselves because, you know, uh, we do this stuff. So, yeah, I had to. Well, I wouldn't be working where I work if I didn't like trains. Indeed. I that. It's a, also, also true for me, even though I don't play with Steam these days for at least a, for a paycheck. We call it a badgerism, but we also have a uh, joke for uh, foamers that are excessive and it's a white rag thrown on the ground next to said foamer as the train passes them, and then there is usually a penalty of served with said foamer. That'll do number 13. <laughs> and Mine back is... up 10 yards, still first down. Yeah, there you go. Mine is always uh, excessive foam, pen penalty, clean out the oil bunker. Beautiful. Heist changed his mind on a speedo. Big boy incoming. It's funny they say no, that. No, no, no. No big boys, again. No, but please I, no. I was producing a, a video about Train Simulator where we run the big boy just so you guys will shut up about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and there's no speedo on the big boy either. <laughs> At least not the historic ones. I'm sure that they put one on the... Actually, uh, yeah, I think the new one has one. We know that it has one because it's got a CDU and PTC, so we know yeah, that there's a speedo on it. Kind of requirement for that to operate on the main line on the class ones now i think yeah. oh look a really a really appropriate uh, meme flat because it has to keep with the timetable uh d's nuts table. or 6972 uh d's nuts that's jimmy's fault <laughs> of course i would love if the player was a little shorter because in first person you're too tall to look out the window hmm that, that no the narrow gauge engines need to be taller is the problem <laughs> Yeah, um, that's actually a problem on the real ones. Yeah. 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 That, that's how narrow gauge works. They're, I, I, yeah. Quite frequently on... Matt, you're what, 6'4"? Uh, I'm 6'2", and I bump my head on the cab on 40 when I get in and out of there, and on 346 or 
any other narrow gauge locomotive, yeah, I feel cramped. Yeah, uh, we always joke that uh, Brett is a standard gauge man in a narrow gauge world. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm on the rear number 13, whichever way we're going to bring this mess down. It's a um, it's, oh, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, Brett is 6'7", and when we were at the, uh, the, the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup, I've got a great picture. I don't need to show it on stream. I don't need to kill the poor lad. Um, but he literally can see over the top of the Eureka's cab from the tender. Jeez. Just, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a little silly. Yeah, on the uh, the 40 and the 111, the uh, 111 has a larger boiler, so the cab doors are noticeably narrower. And yeah. you have to go through it's them sideways. It's fun going in and out onto the running boards on the side of the cab. Yeah, that's, well, it, that's not fun on any engine I've run into. Well, and these are deckless, too, so... It was really fun watching our previous operations manager trying to get in and out of the front of the cab on the yeah. running boards. Yeah, he had a tough time. He's a, he, he was a larger railroader. Most of them are. The not so fit larger railroader. He's just a big guy. <laughs> I think he's like, what, 6'6"? Six, six? Oh, God. I no, I think he's only like 6'5". Still really tall. Oh, I now, I'm now realizing who you're talking about. Yes, he is a large man. <laughs> he's another standard gauge man in an arrow gauge world. <laughs> yeah, indeed, or yes. When, when yeah. you try to use... Uh, uh, one twenty-second scale people on your one thirty-eight scale stuff. Just about. When he, in the, uh, when he gets into twelves cab, he fills the cab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I am the cab. I still have fun. Hey, my, I spe have spe fun speaking of, of uh, if if no other locomotives ever get added to the game, the twelve is required to be added because I work on the real one. So. <laughs> Well, see, that's my argument for why we need to get the C-19 version added and then the K-37 and the T-19, naturally. So I can accept that argument. Um, <laughs> I have Lightful plenty of reference for Master Master over. over. Yes. Uh, hey, uh, what should I load this state train with and where should I take it? I, I, I didn't have a plan for it. It was mostly just transportation. Well, fine then. I guess I'll just load it with a bunch of lumber and leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was literally just transportation to to show the joke of the name. It's perfect. Why are the rail cars twitching? Because uh, this is a problem in multiplayer in the game when you get a lot of rolling stock, and this is surprisingly not that bad, which we've been saying most of the stream here. I'll, I'll have to go through and watch this uh, after we're done. Okay, getting the pop popping cars. It's it's really surprisingly not too bad. So. We're only jittering, you know, maybe once or twice a second as opposed to... Rather than constant barrel rolls? We're not doing barrel rolls, kick flips, and it's not a slideshow, so... Or my favorite that I always had when we first started is uh, skip, hop, and a bang. <laughs> skip, hop, and a bang, indeed. <laughs> uh, in the case of the locomotives being too small, what well, could we get a sitting position in the cabs? Uh, I think that's really going to be a requirement, particularly with the collision models that we have. And when we get faster speeds, you're not going to be able to chase the trains anymore. So I think a locked-in seated position, I think, is going to be necessary that doesn't put you in the uh, the uh, UI, I think. Bring so. back uh, half, one and a half car there, Christian. Whose map is this, and do they have a mini Zorg? Yes, Makely, I'll put it in. <laughs> I'll pull it up again, too, while we're at it. One car. Do. Oh, and I was uh, pleased when you, Leighton, and Brett were ranking that you ranked the twelve where you did. I I, I approve. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we didn't we didn't uh, ruin anyone's expectations. No, I was gonna hunt you guys down because you know. Oh, I've heard it's a, I've heard she's a sweetie. It is, is that a sweet is that engine? Okay, it is good. a sweet engine. I'm ecstatic. It's not a very big engine, but you know, for 1928, it's fairly modern, even though it's saturated, but. For what it was doing in Hawaii, it's a great little thing, and it actually works very good in the Colorado mountains, despite everyone's belief to the uh, contrary. You got 4% grades, you can't do that. She'll do five cars all day long and be happy. 
there you go. Oh, so we were arguing about this the other day, and, and someone was pulling up Wikipedia, and I trust you guys because you actually work on the railroad. What is the rolling grade at the loop? It's a... Uh, I think it's about three and a half is most That's of the, the average. Railroad. Three, three to three yeah. and a half. Gotcha. Um, there's got one... some over four. Yeah, there's one spot at the top of high fill curve at 4.13% on a 30 degree curve. So that's kind of fun. There you go. That's the that's the true challenge spot on that railroad. If you're not get you don't have the right amount of speed as you come up through with the 7 car to 9 car train, you're going to find out real quick how you Yeah, you kind of you actually do have to take a run at it. That's funny. Especially since we we don't have any geared engines anymore. Thank God. <laughs> Yes, Will, as have being someone who has worked on and dealt with geared locomotives, back me up when I say that they're bad. Scrap them all. They're just... <laughs> geared engines are not bad. There's just so much more going on mechanically. They're more difficult to maintain. Bring her back. Uh, Particularly in the the day and age that we are so far removed from their inception, so and and especially anything that was ever maintained by the West Side Lumber Company, it's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> West Side was like the Rio Grande; they just didn't want to replace things. That sounds about right. And ouch, that hurts. But I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, for everyone that's interested, the mini's work of this site is now posted in the description. So you guys can pull up the map and, and look on your side if, uh, if you want to see it. I'm just going to chip in, too. 4%, Will, is that all? Shut up, Jimmy. Nobody cares about your 25% grades. You've 26 got, you've and got, a half, thank you. You've got huge, vicious teeth in the middle of your track. So that there doesn't count. Go. And your, <laughs> and your uh, operative equipment sounds like a bus. Well, I mean, ours isn't much better, to be fair. It's the same yeah. engine, so... It is the same engine. <laughs> oh, very I guess the, twin, the twins don't have that. No, the twins are nice. I like them. Um, I miss the 12 actually, Will, though. Will, we could actually use this as a good time to ask for a, a specific diesel locomotive to be added to the game, if they ever get around to that. Uh-oh. The Baconator needs to exist. <laughs> the Baconator? Agreed. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I can go for that. Okay, uh, I'm not in on this lingo. Which locomotive is the Baconator? <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, our little 21. Oh, is that the, the, the little, little two axle? 44 ton cam? two axle. 44 ton two axle, because you know, just to hell with your track. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't so much go around curves as it beats the curves into submission. However, it sounds like a locomotive for the ES and D, if I'm being honest. However, it has an apt name. A Colorado Fuel and Iron locomotive, originally. Oh, good. So it was All the right, one so doing gonna, the cutting up. We're going to leave this uh, this train here, and then we're going to take the Heisler and go grab some uh, cordwood to go down to the smelter for the next bit. Excellent. Right. Bring back two cars, light bulb. Number 13, if you're clear up there, you should be good to respot for the second load. I just unhooked. Oh, well, then we could just leave that there. I was just going to leave it there. Perfect. You've got the logs ready to go. One car light bulb. Jason Hill. Hmm. Look, he's here. Says, Heisler is a damn good locomotive, though. Oh, that's, I mean. Okay. I, 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 I have worked on Heislers, too. Um, there are lots of weird things in them. The piston rod and the crosshead are one piece. So what? if you want to, yes, yes. What? Yes, the piston rod and crosshead is a single piece. Oh, okay. I'm now confused. Were designed, Heisler was a mechanical engineer, and it is designed as such. Um, I I feel a little attacked by that comment. You're not lined, by the way. Now you are. It's Let just me a grab your next it's switch. It, 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 it's unfortunately true. Heislers were designed by a mechanical engineer, not mechanics. Shades <laughs> were at least designed by people who worked in the woods. Climaxes <laughs> were designed in a barn. <laughs> so, that that should explain a lot of, of things, and that explains why I like the Heisler. I guess I didn't know that. But yeah, no. So so if you want to remove a crosshead, um, you actually have to unbolt the piston and pull the piston out from the top. All right, you were lined back into some cordwood cars. That is... It's 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 rather inconvenient. No, no that is one way to put it. <laughs> that is genuinely hilarious. 
also a good death trap when you're trying to work on the mechanical gear for the valve. Yeah, the valve. The, there's only uh, one eccentric. Really? So well, I guess yeah. A, you can, have a you little share yoke them, so. in the center that actually splits the motion between both cylinders. And if you're trying to adjust the valve, uh, the valve timing, and your head's in there, it can get pretty tight. Yeah, that, uh, it doesn't look fun. I'm looking at the one in game because we've actually modeled all that. But it's it's actually a fairly accurate model. But yeah, it's um they're difficult to work on. Doing all the lubrication and stuff uh, is very difficult because there's just a lot going on in there. Okay, so Will, another good question um, that I got on a bunch of my videos where people were looking at shays and looking at you know gears and all that on the geared locomotives. Um, you're pinned in, take them ahead, knocking off brakes. Um, People were wondering why the gears are just exposed to the air and they're not in some kind of oil bath and uh, other than just slapping crater grease all over the darn thing uh, and just needing to get in there all the time. On a, I on a Heisler, I there actually is an oil bath. Really? Okay. Yeah, they actually they actually do dip into an oil bath. All your brakes are off. All right, yeah, I couldn't move there for a second. Mm, I didn't realize. You, you guys tie down every single car? What do you, work on a railroad with hills or something? Yeah, that that tends to happen. <laughs> and we don't even follow that rule, though. Our, our general rule at the loop is half plus one. So, you got say you get an eight car train, set five handbrakes, at least. Oh, that's that's an option. This is where I chip in. What's a handbrake? Mm. Well, some of us don't have teeth that bite into the rail, okay? And by well, the rail, I mean reverse straight air, no air, uh, no release. Oh, you, you, those, your choo choos are weird. We should do, we should do a video about your choo choos because they're extra special with a side of special. Hey, I will tell you this much: if you go to the company uh, Facebook page, we do have videos and all that stuff. I filmed them. There you go, <laughs> Jason Hill. I had no idea about the fact with the Heisler. I guess you'd never have to worry about piston rod wedge coming loose. I guess not. All right, uh, that'll do 13. Yeah, it'll stop eventually. Uh, eventually. Uh, bring them back, I don't know, eight cars to start. Brakeman protecting point. You're lined into the uh, the cordwood cars. Cut number two. Wish they would fix the rubber banding with multiplayer. That is what we are working on right now. And uh, it is nice and smooth on the dev save. We just have a lot of little details to fix still. Yeah, it would be nice if when you release that, it doesn't break everything. So, you know, testing is good. There you go. Oh, and I'm getting a couple comments saying a lot of people tie down all their brakes on all their parked cars, which uh, is not uh, historical, yeah. but uh, Clown, who is kind of one of my resident um, people that know a lot about the game somehow, uh, is saying that it actually helps with the physics stability in the game right now if you have a lot of rolling stock. So, fair enough. We just never know how many cars we're going to take, so, you know, tie them all. <laughs> That's fair. Tie them all and, and do them all. That makes sense. You got one more to go, number 13. Yeah, we'll just take uh, these Half, four and then head down. Ten, five foot. That'll do. Feels like you hit a brick wall probably up there. I'm knocking brakes off. Okay. You're all untied. I'm on the rear. Do the thing. I haven't done regular train crew on the loop in a long time, but yeah. I, I remember having a few times of coming on the train crew and moving the con system in the morning, and it's like every single handbrake is tied down. Why? <laughs> the one, okay, the one that gets me is we've got one guy that we work with, and Christian knows who I'm talking about, who uh, will tie both handbrakes on a caboose. Oh, and God, if anybody yeah. knows anything about uh, uh, you know the brake linkages on cars, you'll realize that's completely and utterly pointless. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a little silly. I, I I once had to go out onto our fence track, which is where we store most of our cars when they're not currently being used, and uh, found that every single handbrake wheel was tied tight. Um, presumably with a brake club, because some of them I couldn't just get on my own. Uh, and every single car had a chain underneath. Uh, Mind you, our fence track is flat. Yeah. <laughs> Not only is it flat, it's actually dished. It's kind of so, it's kind of a bowl. It dips yeah, in the like middle. A saddle. And... 
Yeah, you, so, you can't uh, actually have stuff escape. Here on here on live stream land, uh, we can talk about some stuff that we uh, that we don't necessarily want to put out in regular videos because the the viewer count is a little bit lower typically after the fact. Um, so I'm gonna continue a story that I started to tell and then realized I probably shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> in uh, my seventh episode of my Words Online playthrough. Um, where I started talking about cars re-railing themselves, and uh, ask me how I know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we were uh, we were doing day out with Thomas at the museum, and we were, it was with 491. So I mean, there's super long days, and I think the night watchman had a, a bad night or whatever. So we got in, and the thing needed all this junk done, and uh, I mean, we were just behind the gun to get the engine out and on the train, uh, despite showing up at 6 a.m. for 9 a.m. takeoff, basically, right? Um, <laughs> and so. We uh we'd left the train on the uh like right up against the crossing to save time that year was the idea, um and someone chained the outside rail or the Oof. wheel on the outside rail, um not just on the inside which is what our rules said but you know uh, well volunteer outfits and all that right so <laughs> and too too many cooks in the kitchen, um and I was uh, I was the engineer and I got told to go ahead and. Uh, we are on the other side of the crossing, so I am paying attention to the Railroad Museum crossing because the amount of idiots that cross there right in front of you, I mean, you got to have your hand on the automatic. Now we have gates, thankfully, but then we didn't. Um, and so I'm paying attention to the crossing, pulling ahead, you know, and it, we're starting, going into the station, you know, I'm doing all the things. And I get into the station, and finally uh, a radio comes over from the infamous you-know-who uh, who was the uh, the former boss there saying, <laughs> "Stop, stop, stop! If you don't if you don't listen to my radio commands one more time, you're out of the cab." And it's like, I looked over at my fireman, and we looked over at the other person that was in the cab, and none of us had heard anything. Uh, so he didn't press the push to talk button down on his radio for any of the previous things he had said. Shocker, <laughs> and. <laughs> The uh, the fish belly flat car jumped the chain, was in the dirt. We pulled it a hundred feet on the ground. It got nice. to the crossing and re-railed itself on the crossing. <laughs> hey, I like problems that fix themselves. Right, hey, it's just great. Like HL scale. Just like HL scale, you, we had our our re-railing uh, terminal plug track uh, in the right position. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a similar story, but I can't tell it. Well, yeah, that's that's fair. We don't need to we don't need to dox anyone. Yeah, so. yeah, I, I can't I can't tell mine unfortunately, but uh, um, all I can say is, is when you do derail on real stuff, you cannot pull it through a switch to rerail it. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Ooh. 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 I, I know the story you're talking about. That's a bad time. Yeah, brand new switch too. <laughs> Handbrakes are good. Prevents tank cars from rolling 15 miles on their own. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's making us all look bad. Yeah. <laughs> Went down to the Colorado Railroad Museum yesterday. I've gotten some friend interested in steam locomotives after getting them into railroads online. Well, that's cool. That's actually really neat. We always like more people getting interested in this stuff because I think we think it's really cool. So. Uh, we wouldn't be here if we didn't. Indeed. Someone says they just saw a hovering locomotive bell. Was Justin firing? <laughs> Those take off. They don't hover. <laughs> they take off. They don't hover. Yeah, they, they, they spin so fast that they fly into space. Yeah, that's uh, that was an impressive feat. Um, long story short, uh, bells are held in with a tapered fit into their, uh, their you know, the top part of the casting that they swing on. Well, also corrosion. <laughs> and get corrosion also also can help. Um, and most bells are equipped with rollover bars so that the bell can't spin. But uh, if you don't have those and your fireman's aboard, you see how fast you can get the bell to swing and Just, spin Justin around. play on this server, too. Oh, good. He, he's going to be here today, but he's driving through Wyoming today. <laughs> oh, bummer. Well, we'll just dox him instead. But yeah. Uh, we can make fun of him because he, he's part of this, so. Wasn't he? Uh, wasn't he on the uh, the high fill and launched the bell into outer space? He actually he got it to fall off the oak. It was spinning so fast. <laughs> it literally launched the bell out. That's the also what thing. happens when your uh, auto ringer is uh, not equipped with a stop bar either. Yeah, I need to add those someday. <laughs> hey, Will, do you remember when the whistle linkage broke on you and me when we were at uh, Truck Farm? 
Last oh, year. no, it wasn't Truck Farm. It was uh, right before Hall Tunnel. Was that? I thought it was. A yeah, truck yeah. Farm. We were. I was blow. I, no, I was blowing for the meat, and oh, all of a right. sudden the whistle just ceased to function. Yeah, that's what it was. I, I did tell you that I ended up finding the bolts, right? Yeah, it was down inside the dome. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was inside the dome. That's I don't funny. Know how the heck they got there, but my funnest mishap of mechanical failure still for me, Will, was the day we were on the nine, going across High yeah. Ridge, and I was trying to. Cl I had just primed my injector, went to close it, and the handle literally came through the wall, uh, oh, attached to the rod, but not attached to the injector anymore. And I literally <laughs> held it up and looked at Will and went, "Will, small problem." <laughs> Oh and my the goodness! Is literally stuck halfway through prime, so it's just spitting water out of the downpipe. But not doing anything. That's, it's not going into the boiler because that would fine. be useful. No, yeah, you might as well just piss it all over your railroad track. And it's a really neat and convenient spot for it to try and do that. Of course, yeah. That, that that's locomotives have personalities, and it was your time to get screwed with. <laughs> well, and the, and then and the nine was a shay, and uh, this is the nine is a lot of the reason I hate geared engines. Unsurprisingly, will there ever be dedicated yeah. servers okay, so, eventually? So, so one story I can tell is the nine holds the record in my my heart for the shortest distance ever traveled before a breakdown. And Mark, I want <laughs> you to guess the distance. Um, five feet, three Man, inches, three inches. Three inches. What did you you try and pull it out of the shop? And yeah, we tried. We were, we, were, we were getting it fired apart in the morning and in the morning and and ready to go. And uh, we we had changed a bolt on one of the eccentrics, um, so we wanted to make sure it cleared. So one of the guys was standing watching, make sure it cleared. And uh, we pull forward, and a different eccentric shatters into about eight pieces. <laughs> we moved. We moved three inches. That is. I was firing that day, and the last thing I wanted to do was go sit in the diesel cab and be a fireman for a diesel. And yep, so I had to sit on a diesel for a day. I got to Bummer. sit on the slumbering Alco, big Alco we had. 1203. At least it was an Alco. At least it was an Alco, but that in that thing, it it literally will lull you to sleep. I believe it. I've uh, I rode in the cab of that at the loop once, actually. The the one time I've ridden, I've ridden in the cab. Look at me, privileged. Ooh. Well, if you ever show up again, well, I will at some point. Uh, I've I've got we, uh, we have really cool engines now. We've got all those Guatemalan two eight O's. They are neat, and I've I've heard videos of the one eleven. I need to actually come see it. The one eleven, the one eleven is cool because it's front end throttle. That that's still small narrow gauge steam is rare. That blows my mind. That it yeah, that's a thing. It's really nice too. The only thing that. If you look over to the uh, right, to the left there, there's our looping trestle. We have to have a loop on the railroad. Well, naturally. <laughs> it's not quite as spectacular as the one you built. Well. It's a lot closer to the ground. Oh, yours is probably a bit more accurate than mine are, so. Jason Hill says there's a story about a shop built whistle falling off the climax at Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad, going into the drink while going across the Nisqually River Bridge, and then not being able to find it again. I think some Schedule 40 pipe was involved. Yeah, I'd believe yes, that. I've heard that story, actually. <laughs> a, a good railroader from that uh, railroad when that happened was there, and I actually heard that story directly from his mouth. Rather entertaining. That's funny. <laughs> also terrifying, but you know, whistle failures are not unheard of. I mean, they get old. At least it's just whistle old. failure. There's a valve there. Well, not not on every railroad. I know I've got some stories from my friends at the DNS where uh, they didn't have shut off valves below the whistles, and now they do. I wonder why. Mm. You send yeah. one into orbit, and then you have a, a safety valve that doesn't shut. Well, you know, that's a that's a problem. And you have yeah, to fire again. Just, just fire harder. <laughs> just fire I mean, harder. It's fine. I mean, like, to quote, to, to point out, Stoffy did prove that it, you can fire against that and compete with that. He did. He did. True. But that was with the oil burning K36. K He could probably do that with the coal burner. It would just uh, kill your back, I think. Kill your back, empty your entire tender into the firebox in short order. Yeah, pretty it's much right. both. Oil's better anyway, and we all know it. Oh, and then Now, mm. them's, them's the fighting words, Will. You can diss the Rio Grande all you want, but you want to tell me that oil burning's better than coal burning? What, do you like your lungs? 
I and my back, and uh, <laughs> I don't like to have to dump coal ash every night. And, I like well, the locomotives being somewhat clean. With yeah, yeah, I can actually effort. clean them every day, and it's not you know back breaking. Yeah, yeah, no, well, I think passengers don't complain about ashes lighting them on fire. I, I don't know what you're on about. We did not, we did not burn down, we did not burn down two freight cars and the entire neighbor's field with 346 at the museum. That never happened. Yeah, I that don't... never happened. We never had to run 40 because of it. We never had to put a special Colorado and Southern weird thing called a Ridgeway Spark Arrestor on her for it. Little pyromaniac. Oil is far superior. Fight me. Jason, I will fight you. I'll see you next weekend. <laughs> Pistols at dawn, get 10 paces and you find out. Pretty much. Let me know when we're past that switch. You got about uh, two cars to go. Yeah, back into the cordwood track. I'm running out of oomph, so. Yeah, one more. Don't forget there's something in the engine house down there, Will. Half. Yes. And. Oh, no. That'll it's do. actually not. I think it's, I, don't, I think it's outside the engine house, actually. All right, you are now no. lined back across the crossover. It's not the five, is it? No, 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 that's, uh, we're not going to talk about the five. Yeah, we're not going to talk about the five. <laughs> oh, boy. Inside jokes here. Uh, and you guys have laid your cordwood track through the iron ore pile? Uh, Jimmy did that in an attempt to make it work. It does not function. I was going to say, I think there's a hitbox there. Yeah, there yeah. is. So it exists sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. You just have to cross your fingers and hope you can get the cars through. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, we've started a, a fight in the uh started a fight in the uh stream here. <laughs> About, is it a coal and oil fight? It is a coal and oil fight, and some people are saying electric and I think they're just confused. Um This is uh, this is not Switzerland. The did it. Yeah, the Swiss did it and J uh, Jimmy has some work? insight yes. here, I think. It's also Taco <laughs> with the fireless. I do think. Nah, let's, uh, let's let's just do, go fold Union Pacific nuclear. <laughs> there you go. I mean, come on. Those giant shark nose steam About turbines from Fallout three, 76. Three more to go. It should fit five. Should be able to fit five cars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep them coming then. About another two maybe. We can unload five at a time, and then we'll have to stash them off to the side. Gotcha. About another car ish. I'm not entirely certain how your spot of five works. About somewhere in there. How do you get five? I think I'm pretty sure I can fit five. I thought you could fit four. I've done four on my save, but if you found a way to do five, I'd be impressed. I'll, I'll let you guys. Uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> there are two of you, so I'll let you guys coordinate this. You know your railroad better than I do. I don't think I don't think five's gonna fit. Maybe it was four. Uh, well, go back another half car. What's wrong with yeah, Spark Arresters? But I don't think the six fourteen will actually fit. There's we there's nothing it. wrong with Spark Arresters. It's just that the Ridgeway is a bit of a meme because the Drango and Silverton had them on their locomotives and they looked really stupid. They also didn't have all the internals they needed. No, so they didn't work. The actual Ridgeway, I mean, the one that we have on 346, faithfully built to the plans, that thing is really cool. If you watch that at night, I mean, it you, it really works. And it's rolling past the hitbox, so we're fine. Oh, that's it right oh, there. there. There you are. You just felt it. <laughs> There's the brick wall. Uh, see if that one will unload. I think it will. Your job is driving electric at 300 kilometers an hour. Well, that that sounds very fun and European. We don't did, we don't go that fast around here. Did you uh, set an unload key, Matt? Um, I did not. He hasn't played in a couple of months, so. I think um, to to end the oil coal debate, uh, my opinion as a mechanical engineer and someone who's fired both at this point, I think oil is better just for efficiency's sake being able to fire cleanly the whole time um you don't you don't have to breathe in coal dust all day uh it's not a mess uh the engine can be somewhat clean you know um i think oil is better i think coal is more romantic the the image of you with the scoop you know and and i think 
coal firing is fun in managing the fire uh, more so, I think, than oil burning. I think it's more fun other than the, the back work, you know, the actual work of it. Um, but I've also not really gotten to fire tonnage oil. I fired a locomotive that was supposed to explode, actually. So, <laughs> so I guess I need to to go fire oil for real. But I do think it, oil is probably better. But I enjoy. I, coal I have fired oil, coal, and wood. Wood is I just like, out of the I question. Like oil. Wood is wood is wrong. Wood is bad. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not much fun. Literally, I keep thinking of wood fire, and I literally think of the Buster Keaton film with uh, the general. And literally, his solution is probably the best one I've ever seen for wood firing. It's it's honestly not that far off. Um, when we were, uh, when I was up at Sumter firing the Heisler up there, um, yeah, you're basically just throwing four foot sticks of wood in constantly, and it's backbreaking work. Yeah, that sounds uh, no fun. Literally throwing an entire fence pole in there makes more sense. Seriously. Oh, All right, Matt, I'm going to stuff this on the, the siding next to the ore train, and then we'll take the ore train up to the iron mine to show that run. Sure. And then we'll finish unloading this later. Works for me. I'm trying to be efficient, Mark. I, I like it. Are we using the isolator for that? No, no, we'll uh, take the 406. Oh, we have a 406? You've leased yes. it? It has a very special name. I was wondering if you would have, or if you're going to name uh, Gene McGowan on the side or something like that. We have the Waldorf. Yeah. That's a 15. What's in the engine shed? I was told not to look in the engine shed. No, no, no. That was the engine shed at the sawmill. Uh, 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 that one That one has an engine named after Justin. Good. We have the nine. This is it the raccoon. Sorry, doxed him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I guessed that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's not the raccoon though. Oh, bummer. Uh, DSP and P nine, silver plume, and then oh, the four hundred six, the Kenosha. Accurate. Yep. Very, very appropriate name. Why does it smell like Kenosha? You guys, you have, you're aware of the the meme with that song in the soundtrack, right? No, I do not. There is a uh, in the soundtrack. There is one song that kind of is a, a bit of a drunken blues to begin with, and it slowly starts to speed up halfway through, until it basically turns into an ACDC song, and then I basically throw everything at the drum kit, and and it, you know at the end and everything comes off the rails literally, and uh, the song's name smells like Kenosha because that's <laughs> what, that's what we say you know when when we're talking about liquor around the yeah, 346. Yeah. So. Yeah, you start you start off really slow, and then you get faster and faster, and then you roll over drunk. Yeah, literally. Fine. Yeah. Feel bad for the guy, but you know, don't uh, don't break rule G, kids. <laughs> Are we gonna clear past this? I think we're good there. Sure. We'll roll with it. I'm parking 13, so I'll be out of the way here in a second. Is there anyone on the southern branch right now? No, not yet. Okay, I am. Here he goes selling his music. Oh, I should sell it for real. You can buy the Railroads Online soundtrack on Steam. Uh, and the money goes directly to me, which is very fun. Just just, uh, just send me a download link. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, I mean, I've done that before. We could do that. can neither confirm nor deny I have used that on a PA system while testing trains. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Honestly, I would much prefer this game's soundtrack as opposed to what we have on our train at work. Tur tourist, tourist railroad um, PA soundtracks are usually lame. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have PTSD from the music that Al Blount would play uh, at oh, Dale Thomas. There's a ghost on the track. Oh, God. Casey Jones, ride it in the cabin. No, no, no. My, fav my favorite of all time is the California Zephyr, that Union Pacific train. Ah, yes. that works. You know, for a train that was operated by numerous railroads, the fact <laughs> that they were able to get that wrong. That, yeah, like, how did they that do that? He wasn't one of the train, one of the railroads that operated that train. Like, it's kind of sad. That is kind of sad. So we'll, we're going to take the Kenosha up to the sawmill Y, turn around, and then go up to the iron mine from there. 
because we've got a 3% up for empties and then a 5% down for loads. Oh, up Roger. slow, downhill fast, tonnage first, safety last. <laughs> One of the songs in the soundtrack is indeed Chattanooga Choo Choo, and it was early enough that it, it's not under copyright. Yeah. On our old single car units that we retired with this rebuild, they actually had coaxial speakers. The Swiss went all out in the 60s, and they did those. Uh, you can crank those up quite loud with, like, ACDC and stuff, and they sound terrific. <laughs> Beautiful. Those at the museum now? One of them is. Yeah. What, we have the the seven, no, I think? No, you guys didn't get anything. Uh, uh, the Pueblo Museum has them. Oh. Uh, no, uh, Woodland Park, the Trolling Museum in Colorado Springs, and then two of them are in a field unaccounted for still. <laughs> Well, there, there are some COG equipment. At, I guess that's the old, old stuff. Then, that's huh? the heritage stuff, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, like the 9. Don't ever try to run that thing. Da, 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 and we're not bringing that story up right now either. <laughs> we'll just stop right there, right? <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Why do the trains run on wood instead of coal? Because uh, we haven't programmed wood yet. Because, yeah, the Class 70, I don't think it ever burned wood. No, I don't think that was a thing. N nor the uh, the cookie. I'm pretty sure the cookie always burned coal as well. I hate you for saying it that way. Cookie! It's the cookie. Fight me. It's a Cook Locomotive and Machine Works product. <laughs> TM, yes. I could, I could just call it an Alco if you prefer. Well, I mean, that's what it became later on. <laughs> It's a pre-alco alco. A pre-alco alco. Yeah, no. So I mean, we we just we had the code and we had the models. So it was like, okay, well, just make them burn wood for now. And uh, when we get to the point where we actually have coal I, I and implementation, I can't we'll imagine the actual real-world suffering of having to fire a class seventy on wood. I, I that would cannot just... comprehend how miserable that would actually be. That's a long throw to the front of that box oh, with a man. small door. <laughs> firebox and a, a key small firebox. door that's very close to the floor yeah that would suck would a locomotive theoretically work if you're burning adult drinks um it would have to be 151 and you would have to have quite a lot of it and it would probably still not work very well i don't think the mileage is going to be very good i was going to say is a spot fire sure or is a, a thing to light an engine off with? Mm. Mm. No, I've never done that. A little more back, Matt. Yeah, that'll do. Look at these hoppers with real names. <laughs> Actually lettered for the railroad and numbered and everything. This, I think we stopped with the meme flats after the logging flats. <laughs> no fun. Oh, we've got a UPD and G caboose. Look at that. Yes, the 1511, I believe. It is. Do you, do you guys the, have a 1009 that Justin's also tried to burn down? I think we have a 1009, but we do have a 1009. I don't think Justin's been allowed to light fires in any of the cabooses, <laughs> real or virtual. Not, not for a while, at least. All right, Matt, and <laughs> I got to throw one switch ahead of you, but uh, I'll go get it. So the uh, UPDNG fifteen eleven is the Colorado and Southern ten oh six for those who do not know. Ah, I, including is, me, I don't know my Colorado yeah, Southern. Yeah, yeah. So ten oh six is original UPDNG number was fifteen eleven. Uh, gotcha. And when we number, not the UPD number. No, it was UPDNG. Uh, that would mean it was a Colorado Central car. Uh, either way, it was DL and <laughs> DL and G. Ben told me UPD and G, so it's all his fault. Colorado Central became the UPD and G. The Denver South Park and Pacific became the DL and G, and then those two combined to become the C and S. I didn't know that actually. But the you, the 1006 you... has the number 1511 in UP brown and yellow underneath the siding. We found it when we were working on it. It's still there. I mean, you still could technically call it UPD and G, even though it was DL and G. D and... DLNG, it was still a Jay Gould company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The same What's, thing. Yeah, they, What's were, the I mean, difference? they were all owned 
They were all UP subsidized. And so the UPD and G is that Union Pacific, Denver, and Gunnison? No. Union Pacific, Denver, and Gulf. Denver and Gulf. No clue why they named it Gulf, but they did. Where's the Gulf in Colorado? <laughs> there isn't. That's, because... that's why everyone's confused. Well, you they, know. They were going south at the time. One of the railroads merged into that was the Denver, Texas and Gulf, so. Well, that makes a vague amount more sense, but. <laughs> I'm far enough back that I'm being pulled by just a tender. I guess I should walk it's up a fine. little bit. <laughs> Chris in chat says, "Call it a, calling it a cookie is a no-no, but what about the E.T. and N or WNC? Well, that's just a mouthful. Cook is at least easy to say. Nobody wants to say E.T. and WNC. That's why it gets called the Tweetsie. Let's make the acronym impossible to say. Hello. Hello, Harry and everyone else. Propane-powered locomotives seem kind of dangerous. Uh, also Take... very non-functional. I was going to say. Non unless you're on flat track and you're not pulling anything. Yeah, it's not, you don't get enough BTUs out of it. I mean, if you force-fed oxygen into it, it might work. Yeah. Then you're pushing yeah, we... just, like jet after, uh, jet after burner. Because <laughs> propane torches work really well. Yeah, oxy-propane torches are amazing. That's our brand new toy at the loop right now. <laughs> you guys have one? Yeah, we got one here recently. I don't think I've ever used oxypropane. I've only ever used oxy um, It'll cut fast. I, I believe well, it. Just let me know if it seems like we're slowing down. Well, we are. We're slowing down. I'm on full throttle here. <laughs> He's got All it wide open. So. We shouldn't need two engines. We've done this with one. Yeah, I mean, it's just low going for that portion of it, remember? It's oh, like yeah, because this is 4% through here. It's 3% of the rest of it. Sorry, right, we're still moving. Yeah, you've not stopped yet, so keep them rolling. Yeah, th this one section's 4% from the smelter up. Kind of no way around that. As an ignorant Brit, have there ever been 3-foot gauge fireless locos? Um, I don't I would believe anyone ever did that. I would have, there maybe somewhere as like an industrial thing that no one's ever heard of, perhaps, but I've I've never seen one. I've ne yeah I've never seen one either. Yeah, I've only seen a couple of fireless, and those are at IRM. So I've seen standard gauge ones, but no. yeah, I've never I've never seen a narrow gauge one. I've seen narrow gauge compressed air engines for like mine use. <laughs> I mean, we're still moving. Never forget the UC and SV. <laughs> Oof. Oh, we don't. I I think um, if we're gonna talk about that railroad, uh, it has to be on Twitch, and I need to be at least four sheets to the wind to really uh, <laughs> to really to really sell that one. <laughs> wow. Well, we're talking about compressed air locomotives. <laughs> well, they are the the most notorious, aren't they? <laughs> that they are. Fill it with concrete and run it on the main line, everyone. <laughs> Do I need to get another engine and push? Uh, yes, yeah, get out and push. I am wide open and in the corner here and here. No go. <laughs> it hasn't stopped, so... Oh, we wait, made it before. No, we're stopped. The driver yeah. is dead on the bottom. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just get the uh, high slur and push. This is like uh, the, the time that Gary didn't fill 491's sand dome and I had to play fight 491's throttle up during Polar Express. Okay, now to be fair, I have run the 111 from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill in a rainstorm with no sand. You can do it, but one of, you've got a front end throttle in that. You've got a front end throttle in that. Yeah, I know, and, and then that, and that makes it a little easier. It does. Yeah, no, it was kind of embarrassing because we didn't. I mean, we were pulling four cars with a K thirty seven at the museum, like, and it couldn't do it. it, it she, to be fair, this was with the old throttle bar too, which um, was a, a a mic invention, which just was just bad. Uh, <laughs> we always wondered why her throttle was such a pain to deal with, and it was because it, it none of it was it was all binding, it was all done wrong, 
all well, that. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't so, even the throttle out of that engine. We found it in a boxcar. Yeah. So now that she has her correct throttle, it's like a giant 346. It's very easy. Um, but with that that throttle that you had to literally put your back into to move and piston dome, or not piston dome, uh, for, uh, dome throttle. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that was a workout to keep the train moving. We never stopped, but we were going about a quarter mile an hour through the cut at one point. Yeah, front end throttle makes it a lot easier because you're not having to pull through that packing land. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Grand. Yeah. That, it's, a lot, the... it's a lot less resistance. And there's also no delay to what you do. Yes. Yeah. You get instant instant feedback. It's it's very notable noticeable. So, since the 111 and the 40 are basically the same size engine, um, the 111 is way more powerful, but they're roughly the same. It, there's a huge delay in the 40 between when you open the throttle and something actually happens versus the 111, which is pretty much instantaneous. Yeah, that is really nice on the 111. All right, make it go, nice. Matt. All right, Put the throttle on the ceiling. All that fun stuff. Wait a minute, we can't do that. Uh, in the case of a joke, it's made the southern branch so long. For me, in the yeah, it felt like it didn't go anywhere. Oh, but like loopers here, taking forever to get anywhere now. I know you're supposed to enjoy the ride. It's pretty. <laughs> my joke of my joke of the, the loopers. I always complain about not having enough time yeah. to do things, and this is why. Be the uh, will. It would be the uh, open the throttle like the forty and hear the thwack. Yeah, when the, when the throttle hits the uh, independent as you open it all the way. Oh my god. I think the 20 can do that too, but... Um, so real quick, I noticed on the stream that you guys are attempting to come up the shallow grade on the lineup to the iron ore mine. I may or may not have just accidentally kicked some cars down that grade from the top, <laughs> and I'm trying to chase them down. Well, now we need to go well, that's see good. this. We're just now moving again, so we're going to keep going. If we see cars, I guess we'll have an accident, and we'll film that, and Bart can get his derail counter going. Indeed. I'm, uh, preparing I'll, get, I'll get the Mario sounds on standby. <laughs> do, 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 do. What is this kink? Who laid this? Vomit. Jimmy. <coughs> <coughs> Hey, it works, so uh, I don't want to hear it. We had a joke a while back. Don't let cog railroaders lay your trackage. <laughs> they, they, hey. they don't believe in any grade is impossible. Yeah, he's uh, he suffers from the same disease that I have working in transit now, where every car every curve looks broad. And now even the thirty degree ones. So, uh, only thing I know about mine at work is we're down to ninety meter radius minimum. So I don't know what that translates to, but... 90 meter radius. Someone get the table. Clown, are you here? 90 meter radius? Oh, that's still pretty sizable. That's not quite you in a railway. Because I'm pretty sure Moron's Castle was uh, 66 degrees, about a 180 foot circle. Which means that's... That's 90 foot, which is, uh, yeah, like something like 28 meters or something. That's okay, but yeah, by that comparison, it's not so bad. But that's the Uinta, which, I mean, they yeah, were special, Yeah, they were insane. So. But they also had articulated. It's fine. Articulated engines for for their morons castle, yeah. I like your guys' use of bridge deck as ladders. Uh, that's that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, well, you know, when you fall off the grade and it's all stonework, it's kind of hard to get back up. Yeah, I usually use sideways bits of uh, grade itself, the the normal kind, yeah, just uh, perpendicular. Yeah, I just turn it at the sawmill Y. I'll park on the siding up a, uh, up at the top of this hill. Ah, uh, good. Clown is here, and he says ninety meter radius is about twenty degrees per hundred foot. So that's, See, that's not degree. even that's not even bad for you know what we have at the loop. That's like twenty degrees is like the maximum on the Coombrace and Toltec. That's that is sh uh, that is a shallower on, curve. Thirty degree curves on a four point one three percent grade. It's like going up a six percent grade. It's fine. Yeah, it'll work. Coming out of a continuous, what, three and a half, four percent there? I forget what ladder track is. Uh, I'd have to go find my table. I would, uh, actually, here you go, never mind. 
railroad farmer, I have my rule book here, so hold on. <laughs> Good Not man. for this railroad by any stretch. We don't have one. I was gonna say. <laughs> You've got the train, Matt. I'm I'm behind you by about a whole car length. It's actually happening. It's just that this is three percent here. The bottom is four. All right, I'm gonna have to hop out for just a minute here. So I'm gonna ride in the caboose and let you guys entertain folks for a minute. I'll be right back. Entertain us. Don't give Jimmy <laughs> ideas. Yuck, 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 yuck. Yeah, it's, it's a transition. It goes from right, right there at uh, uh, the cut uh, from about 2.5 to 4.13 at high fill. So it's it transitioned from about 3 to 4. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I always say it's a three, three to three and a half percent rolling grade. That that's pretty close. I still liked our solution for getting the uh, Heisler and even the Climax up to where they were for a while. Yeah, hook up to something else and drag it? Yeah, hook it to something else faster and drag it then. Hook it to something useful? Hey, they were useful. They, the Heisler has perfect use working the logging, logging line because it has air brakes. Other than that, it's completely useless. <laughs> and the Climax has no purpose working until they uh, change it, but that's okay. We're, we're going to make Mark's stream, you know, full of angry comments about how geared engines are superior in this game. They're not. They suck. They're horrible. We hate them. We all, we all started... Uh, start, reading, start reading off the hate comments there, Jimmy. I am watching the comments. We all started out, we all started out liking geared engines and yeah, yeah. After after spending seven and a half years working on a Shea, I dislike geared locomotives. Three inches, and it broke down. Three inches. Yep. Here we go. Matt, did I tell you that I ran into Cuddles the other day, and uh, I only ended up talking to him for like a minute, and he was the one that stopped the conversation? Wow, really? Yeah, right? Oh, Cuddles. Yeah, usually that's a four-hour commitment. Yeah. I enjoy conversations with him, especially I remember having to explain to Shane how to calm him down in the cab. Give him a Snickers? No, just start rolling off movie quotes. It gets all chipper and cheery if you do that. I have no idea which way that switch ahead of you is thrown. I know that's precisely why I've gone to crawl ski here. I'm getting the one behind. All right. Don't worry, if it isn't thrown the right way, he'll get the point when he gets there. We just spent about uh, two minutes talking about how horrible geared locomotives are, so there should be lots of hateful comments. Oh, okay, good. Is there anything worse than geared, someone asks. Uh, mechanical? <laughs> as far as trains go, I don't know. As far as mechanical things, hydraulic, I diesel, hydraulic. Hydra I mean, yeah, gas mechanical maybe. Okay, gas mechanicals are actually kind of fun. I mean, they're kind of cool though. But having played with one, they're actually kind of cool. They are neat. Yes. Uh, big Technically, that was a diesel mechanical, but still. Yes, yes, turbine engines. Those are worse. Uh, yes. Jet turbine engines. There you go. 
gas turbines. We got like five or six cars left. Indeed. I'll let you know when I see a caboose. Do you gents mind if I invite my buddy Jason on? He's been watching and uh, yeah, fellow sure. railroader, good people. Okay, let me grab a invite here. Invite him to Discord too if you want. Wait, that's yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. If I've ever heard it. Good person in railroader. Yeah, good, the, good those person. Well, three, okay. Three cars, Matt. Maybe not. Maybe not good then. Come on, railroaders. Would, as Ben has always said, railroaders would make sailors blush. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's pretty accurate. Hey, we're being very good right now. We are being. I'm surprised at how good we're being. And it's it's always been a and challenge for be. me on YouTube because like, when you talk about uh, locker room talk, talk about shop talk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Flying tools and uh, profuse language. <laughs> Sometimes uh, not even related. You're good to back up, Matt. I'll get the switch behind. I'm just waiting for it to stop. Okay. When you can use a certain word as a noun, a pronoun, and an adverb in the same sense, you know you're doing good. It's also an adjective. Don't forget that. Hey, don't forget that. <laughs> it's everything. When someone says, wait, railroaders curse more than sailors? You bet they do. <laughs> Coming back. I'm protecting the shove. <laughs> you're not, not sure what I'm protecting, but... Oh, we blind shove all the time. It's fine. Well, that's, yeah. that's the fun of having a game that allows multiplayer railroading. It's is doing all the things you're not allowed to do. Kicking cars. Like taking that. taking empty cars down the hill by themselves. I'll say it just because no one else is saying, "Yep, lady, that's what he said." <laughs> <laughs> Shop talk, yeah, the profanity flows more than the Niagara. Not wrong. I have always wanted to uh, build an HO scale diorama of a shop environment with like a little welder light going off and a soundtrack of choice choice words. <laughs> Too accurate. Anyone who works in a workshop fixing broken things has more interesting vocabulary than sailors. Yep, that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When I was working on my GTO's front suspension last year, uh, oh, I, I, every, every word in the book was said. Mostly after I hit myself in the left hand with a four pound hammer. But yeah, yeah, yeah that'll right. do it. Yeah, so. I've, I've created some colorful language whilst doing self harm while trying to repair something. <laughs> yeah, about to say, uh, how many words did you use when you were putting the transmission in the mercury uh, the other day? Actually, none. I managed to restrain myself. Now, you know, removing the fill plug on my Cherokee a few years ago, I think I created new a new list that was almost as good as uh, Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Someone says that their boyfriend was a truck driver, and from the stuff he's told them, that you think that truckers have the top spot. Now, here, here's what we say in, in the railroad industry. Um, like, look at how many more cars we have and more tonnage we have than truckers, and um, that's how much more we swear. So there's, a, there there's also go. a good saying that we have that I can't use because swear words. Truckers are a word that rhymes with truckers. Shit by rail. <laughs> not, not to offend any uh, aspiring truck drivers in here. We're just, you know, talking a little smack. Smacked right, your hand yeah. with a wrench. Three words, all of them you can't say on YouTube. Yep. And yeah, we can't we, say much on YouTube. You can't. Well, not when you're uh, trying to do it for, uh, you know, an income all, stream. All audiences. <laughs> and for all, all audiences. Uh, lined out. Yeah, you should be lined up. Truck you service be, shops are... All the way to the iron mine. Truck Stand service shops are more cold uh, than the drivers. Passing siding up there by the engine house. Okay. Are you coming up? Coming up. I caught my cars. No derailments. Woo. That's not a very ES&D moment of you. No, believe it or not, the track work may look terrible, but we've got this down pretty good. It's cheers, very cheers functional. Stern. Very yeah. good. We, uh, we had some hilarity back when there wasn't clients. I, 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 will, I will say all the people who have started playing this game more recently um, just don't quite get the full experience of randomly launching off into space. It's true, but it has gotten remarkably more stable. Or 
of being the client server or the host server guy and trying to run a train and then being called by another train going, hey, can you come re-rail my train? Oh, God. Like 10 pieces or a million. Yeah, um, so stop before this switch here. Jimmy's going to pass us on the on the left. Where are you at right now, Jimmy? Uh, well, my character is walking up to the switch I need you to hold short of. Uh, the train's somewhere behind me. <laughs> well, okay. Which siding are you going on? The one on the right or the left? Uh, which one works for you guys? I'll just take this one here. Okay, then you can keep coming, Matt. Yes, the unstoppable moment of the day. Jimmy left his throttle open and got out of the cab, walked half a mile to throw a switch. <laughs> and it wasn't as bad as me crashing out the other night. Oh, that was bad. Uh, we used to retrieve trains like all the time when we crash out. We'd have somebody running. Yeah, this one this one resulted in a three train head on collision. How do you how do you how do you do that? So we had two trains hooked together, both under power. Gotcha. And, uh, Jimmy crashed out coming down the hill from the oil refinery, and I was coming from the freight depot. And um, yeah. Yeah, because I don't, like, technically I don't think you can have a three-train head-on collision. Like, that just doesn't... We, we managed. It doesn't well, add up. was two, two separate trains hooked together, so I mean... Oh, come on. Come on, Mark. You know, you, you know you can't challenge railroaders like that. We'll find a way. We'll find a way. You may want to stop, Matt. Yeah, you might. You might. Well, you said come ahead, and now you're confusing. Yeah, I, I meant stop for oh, the switch. Oh, and, and now we have YouTube content, everyone! <laughs> hey! <laughs> he just pile drove the caboose straight through the class 70. Why does it smell like Kenosha? <laughs> hey, you know what's really hey Matt, you're still mostly on the tracks. If you back up, you might be okay. Yeah. Precisely. That's how this works, right? <laughs> yeah, re-rail yourself kindly. It might snap back over. Not, I don't think it's going to, but uh, it's at least out of the way. I like how I've been running a train by myself this entire time and been, have been fine. Fixed. <laughs> we're professional railroaders, I swear. We know what we're doing, mostly. Do, do we, though? Mostly on the track. Yeah, pee in a cup. Rule G. Yeah, rule G, there it goes. Oh, goodness, you've been, you've been uh, you binned more up here than you did back there. I didn't even see it. Uh, I'm sure the stream is just having a good old laugh. They are, they are enjoying this, yeah. Well, it, hey, it wouldn't be a Railroads Online stream if there wasn't at least one derailment. Oh, this one's a, this is a pretty good one, though. This is like a sizable derailment. I'd give you more points for this. Cool. I like brownie points. Can I buy Girl Scout cookies with them? <laughs> uh, much like whose line is it anyway, unfortunately, they don't matter. Man, I was so looking to that vacation to Maui. <laughs> this car just derailed itself again. That's cool. Well, you know, derailing tool is uh, is a thing that, you know. I know, but I set it on the tracks and then it just fell back off. Clown says there was no derails on his mat when we reviewed it. That's true. There wasn't. But Clown's, What's the fun in that? Clown's got like the best track out of anyone, I think, so. You have to have some derailments. I don't think we can blame this one on the track either. Yeah, we can't blame this. Yeah, one. no, yeah, this, this was, was uh, definitely not the track's fault. Uh, operator error. error. <laughs> I guess yeah, information error. But uh, the conductor is getting uh, some time off for this one, I think. The best part of that is I have the stream up on my phone, and you guys are going off about Matt. You may want to stop. I'm looking at the stream, going, hey, "What are you talking about? He's got plenty of space." I forgot there's a time delay. There's there. a time delay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I was hitting the brakes, but she just doesn't, you know. No air brakes, they don't stop. Yeah, it's a little heavier. And and realistic physics. Indeed. Um, folks are talking about the Passenger Car Tech Tree video. Yes, that premieres in 20 minutes. So um, don't worry, fear not. We're going to uh, end this stream before that so we can enjoy the, the premiere together and I can respond to comments in there. So uh, well, we've got... In that case, you'll probably have to do a second on ours because you're only gets like half the railroad. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of what we've been doing uh, for most of these visits because it's challenging and takes a lot of time to see everything but yeah, um 
Uh, with you guys obviously being fellow Colorado railroaders, uh, we could make a special exception for that, I think. That and we can sit here and talk shop and, and make all sorts of inside jokes, because, you know, why not? <laughs> the number six has lost its uh, the sides of its headlight somewhere. It's fine. That's a fun bug. Oh, that's cool. On the ground again. It's fine. It is nice having the re-railing tool accessible to everybody. Yeah, that was a, a, a brilliant change. Bit of a pain to implement, but a really good Worth change. It. Yeah. It definitely cleans the mess up a lot faster. Well, and it's really good because otherwise we all hated server hosting because it meant that... You, <laughs> you were the guy that actually, had to run across the map. couldn't actually do anything. Yeah, that was uh, one of those things when we were doing testing and we had god dev run speed and you could just run across the map and like, you know... 30 seconds, so it was just like, okay, yeah, I'll just come re-rally, no big deal. That wasn't a pain point for us, and then we realized, oh, yeah. yeah nobody else has this. No one else has this, so. Will it re-rail itself? Yes, it will. Look at that. Hooray. Woo! Just keep coming back, Jimmy. Getting some pins in. Coming on back. Maybe, maybe pins in. Looks like they're maybe in. That's cool. Nailed it. Let me grab this. Man, we almost made it through this episode without a single derailment. Oh, almost. Almost. All right, bring him back, Jimmy. Close. You have links and pins in all these cars, so as they get... Oh, well, apparently I've got four cars by themselves. That's cool. Yeah, see, we uh, we managed to lose this one. Number six, bring them back when you're ready. And just just keep bringing them back. That's all right. I got all them. They're all hooked back together. I just need that half. <laughs> well, we are bringing it to you. A half and a whole... <laughs> The re the rest of the thing, whatever it be. The door bug still exists. Yes, it does. It's not. Yes, uh, it also leaves doorbell. Doorbell. Any any dynamic bell. anything. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's really not that high of a priority to fix. You know, with a uh, overhaul of the entire way the game works going on. So. Hey, leave it in. I love pulling drawbar pins on people when I find them floating. Slingshot of the caboose there for a second. <laughs> all right, you're all back together, Jimmy. Mentally or physically? Physically. <laughs> Mentally, there's no hope. <laughs> well, that that is railroad everything, right? So. And he's a cog railroader, so it's a different he's style. He's a different breed of... Yeah. Yeah. The oxygen deprivation. Someone just joined the call. Yeah. You do have oxygen deprivation. Jason's here. Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? We're breaking stuff. We are breaking stuff, as I'm sure you've been seeing. <laughs> yes. All right, so, ahead, Matt. So for context for you guys, Jason's worked. God, you've 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 played with Choo Choo's all over the place up in the Northwest. Brag a little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all over. Mount Rainier, Chehalis, uh, Snoqualmie for a little bit. Anywhere, is, anywhere Mr. F. Stathios went. Pretty much. And now he's trying to sequester me into doing things, which he's succeeding at, so, you know, more points. Well, things are getting interesting there, Mark, It'll be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to we'll have to talk shop after uh, after the videos today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that we've derailed and re-railed everything, the uh, the popcorning in the cars is getting a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> we also are in an area with a condensed amount of stuff. That is true. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff kind of here. Oh, Clown, once again, knowing things that I don't know. Uh, to make the parts reappear as a client, run 12 rail cars away from the locomotive, then come back. All right, well, I guess we could just go to the end of the train. 
Are bumper collisions modeled backwards, unlike derail valley? Not sure what you mean by that. Yeah, so theoretically with the new update, we haven't been able to test like lots and lots of trains. We've got like one 20 car train on the test map right now. Um, it, everything should be smooth. That That is the goal and the, the reason why we're doing this big overhaul. So should be all smooth. Uh, and so far it is, even at 200 kilometers an hour, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, silly, but obviously just for testing. No purposes. one will be running that fast, I hope. No, you, well, you, we, will, we, will be, I, we will be giving the engines accurate speed caps for what they are, so. Don't How does Cloud know more things than me? People will find a way to break it. People will, uh, yeah. The last Railroads Online live stream I did on YouTube, uh, someone showed me <laughs> a bug where you can, uh, if you have a client, I, th I think a client has to re-rail or something, and someone has to be in the F menu. Oh, yeah, but you yeah, can, and then you can back up into space. You can back up into space. Under the map. Fun fact, I actually got a, a copyright notification for playing Stairway on my acoustic guitar, which <laughs> apparently that's that's how good my rendition of it was, is that it, it got auto-detected. So. <laughs> that's good for you, I guess? <laughs> there you go. I can play the guitar good, apparently. Hey, Will, I believe that switch is lining in. Uh, it should be lined to go to the right, which is what we want. It's lined to the right. It is, yeah, it's lined to the right. And technically, you can't line a facing point switch against you, so... Well, line against is for the direction of travel we desire to go. Indeed. Well, yes, you can do that. <laughs> and we don't want to back up the grade with, you know, the cars. <laughs> you can if you split the switch. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That's fair. We're not doing any more train drifting today. No more. Yeah. It doesn't work for those of us who have two-part switches either. No stairway. Yeah, when uh, Jimmy's people run through switches, it usually involves uh, an accident. It doesn't end well. <laughs> it's actually funny that the railroad, the mishap happened to happen with Justin's locomotive. Oh, well, naturally. This is a bit of pretty railroad right here. Yeah, I like the curved bridge. We did that, and we kind of tried to make it loop-esque before we built that loop over there. <laughs> I like it. Just derailed your first train. Feeling good. The Class 70... No, the Class 70 has brakes now. We finally Thank settled God. that argument. There was a, an internal argument amongst us about should it have brakes or not. Because the, the drawing that we were working off showed it didn't have brakes, but the Baldwin spec sheet said it did. When it was delivered, it technically did. Well, don't don't start this argument don't again. Don't start this argument again. It has brakes. It, it has brakes stop. and stop talking. Oh, come on, you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, give him a break. Ugh. Get out of here. See what we have to put up with. Oh, see, so, you know, you've put, you put up with it all week. You've cheesed the, uh, the the bridge with a bit of groundwork here, too. Come yeah, on. Yeah, it's not tall enough. We well, need some taller steel bridges. This is your bridge, bud. This is your guys' bridge, so. <laughs> that's, that's what it's modeled off of? It is modeled off of your high bridge, yeah. Yes. I thought as much. I wasn't 100% certain until I, I compared it. It needs to be it, but... swaying four to five feet in either direction. Oh. Also needs to be showing uh, orangish red primer. Well, you know. Don't forget the guys dangling off of it to hang Christmas lights. <laughs> God, I miss doing that. <laughs> you, oh, well, I was the one doing it this year, so meh. We actually, for uh, a couple of years for Halloween, we hung a couple of dummies off the bridge. Beautiful. So there was one up top with a rope, and the other guy was hanging off the rope underneath the bridge. The sheriff got called a couple of times. I was going to say, did you get, did. get to call the cops on you for that oh, one? People on the interstate passing by could see it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's I a bit of an that. Oopsie. That was so much fun. You still have the dummies, DMs too. on Discord. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you, you need those, don't you? Yeah. 
Oh, and don't forget, if you're on the subject of Halloween trains, uh, don't stick your hands out the windows, folks. We have enough body parts to the Halloween train already. Oh, God, that joke just... Every man. time. Every single time. That's very... <laughs> We've, we've, we riffed on that a bit uh, at the museum. It's fun. Admittedly, since I haven't done the spiel for the loop in quite a few years, I almost have forgotten most of the cheesy jokes. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, the Georgetown Loop is right off of I-70 in Colorado, so that I presume people were seeing it, the, uh, the dangling dummies from I-70. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, you can see the hybrids really well from the eastbound lane, so... That makes sense. That really is a good location for that railroad. It is. Good thing you guys put it there, right? Although I guess you did. Uh, the the loop did have to be relayed, didn't it? Yes. Yes, it did. It's not the original uh, the, track. No, it's not the original track or the original bridges or anything. That's right. Even the the high bridge is a recreation, right? All the bridges are. None of none of the bridges are original. It there's an argument that the turntable that had been used back when the line was first being rebuilt as one of the bridges uh, was the same turntable that the CNDS used as the bridge that was in that location, but no one knows for sure. It's one of those things that's lost to time, like the infamous, yes, it's the Uinter Railway 5 chime because the sticker said so. Yeah. No one knows. Like, Maybe it was. It's okay. It's like the myth CNS four chime that nobody knows where it is. <laughs> Indeed. It's in a boxcar at the museum. It's on another railroad. Who it's knows? somewhere. You hang the poor souls who lay the tracks funny from the bridge until they learn to build straight track. You <laughs> do, they don't need to attack me like that. <laughs> I mean, do you have a t do you, on your server? Do you have any sections of tangent? Yes, some, some. <laughs> and, and, Are they long? A couple, yeah. The and the flat bits uh, on the mountain bits. I try to hug the cliffs too much, which is a mistake, but. <laughs> well, think about this way. We've relayed a lot of this. We had straighter lines and shorter routes to all these industries. And then we decided it doesn't look narrow gauge enough. It looks too modern railroad is. So we ripped <laughs> a lot of this out and rebuilt it so it looks like a narrow gauge railroad. Well, there you go. I mean, we turned what was a five minute run down to the oil refinery into what? A 20 minute run by relaying? Yes. I like it. Just did it for the first time today, and I'm I'm upset. <laughs> well, you can be upset. I like it. Clown is reminding me that he hugged the hills and, and did it right, but he's better at laying track than I am, and I'm making excuses. So, someone says, "How in the hell you lose a whistle?" and I'll one up you. How in the hell do you lose a locomotive? Um, when I worked at BNSF. We had this loco like they had metrics on how long it took tr a broken locomotives or locomotives that needed service to come to the shop, and it was like this big thing that you know transportation department was trying to solve. Like, okay, you know, <laughs> this locomotive has been not running for four days because it you know it went dead and uh, it needs to go for its maintenance. Uh, you know, it's got to get to the shop, and it was always this big political point between mechanical and transportation of when are you going to bring it to the shop? Come on, we need it. Um, and it was always like they would have 15 locomotives that they had to bring all at once, of course, because why would they give them to you in any reasonable manner? But anyway, we had this locomotive that needed to come in for maintenance, and uh, it was like a week past due. And I, like, my boss is yelling at everyone to try and figure out where this locomotive is, get the locomotive to the shop, and he's like, you need to go and like talk to the Yardmaster in person or something to get this. And I call the Yardmaster, and I'm like, dude, where the hell is this locomotive? And he's like, we can't find it. What do you mean you can't find it? It's a locomotive. It's the size of a small building. How do you lose 400,000 pounds? Yeah, seriously. I mean, it was like, where, how do you, how have you lost this? And so it was like, they were, they just wrote it off as, 
they they wrote it off as oh yeah we we can't find it it's lost whatever you know we'll we'll eventually find it so me being resourceful and bored on third shift i started pulling up all the yard cameras and uh, any guesses as to where the locomotive was not in the state no better than that same spot it was left in uh, the, the, yes but even better than that in the shop no Outside of the yard office, right in front of the yardmaster. Had he looked out his window, he would have seen it. But no. Oh, that's yeah. great. Just, it was, I mean, it was just so dumb. Like, I found it. I just, you know, head to the desk, started laughing, picked up the phone again, called the yard, and I was like, hey, I found the locomotive. Look out your window. And he goes, what? I go, look out your window. And he's just like, oh, you know, oh, Jesus some bad words and then he just hung up and then the locomotive was at the shop in like 20 minutes it was great oh there you go perfect See, yeah <laughs> it's just like come on <laughs> come on Pete. like it's but that's just that's one of those like things. asking my 11 year old to go look for anything so well yeah i i resemble that i know how that goes they used to ask me to go find parts in the in the parts box car behind the, the shop at the museum and be like it's on this shelf this far down, next to this stuff. Go get it. 30 minutes later, I still hadn't found it because I just can't find stuff. Not everyone is talented in that way. <laughs> well, to be fair, organizational at the museum was not the world's greatest. True fact. It's, it's so in a pile of stuff somewhere. It Just dig through the pile. You'll find it. <laughs> See, the problem is, is like right now we're going through draft gear and doing all of our winter maintenance, and I know where everything is. The problem is, is it's out back under four feet of snow. Well, I know yeah. where it is. I just can't get to it. And I have no desire to go dig up four feet of snow to find, you know, a small minor draft gear part. <laughs> no, thanks. Where's your sense of adventure? Just grab a new one. I'm go well the ones that are on the table. I'm just happy, Will, that you told me to go grab more blocks the other day when we were lifting the 34. And uh, as I'm looking around for blocks, I trip over a pallet covered in snow that's just full of blocking. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, look, more blocks. Hey, there it is. Found it. I, think right. I don't think any of us knew it was there. We're coming into the iron ore mine here. Looks like you guys have a decent yard set up here of some flavor. A couple tracks. It's That's been redesigned a couple of times. Some ES and D track work here too. Yeah. Nice. It's a little sharp. It's fine. It's, it's yeah, fine. It works. It, it, it does work. <laughs> Clown is having an aneurysm and or laughing at the stream, I think, when he's seeing these. Good. We feed off suffering. Have an aneurysm. <laughs> You've got a turntable, and the turntable arm is in the foul of the other track. Well, if fine. it was not spinning randomly, it wouldn't be. <laughs> that has nothing to do with us. Well, we'll get there. Turntables need an overhaul, and we're aware. But, you know, uh, we're fixing, I, I don't know, core gameplay right now, so. I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather that be fixed than the turntables. I can realign them. It's fine. <laughs> You'll get to turntables, and you get around to it. Uh, basically soon oh dad, no jimmy no bad out you you caught me with your, your darn pun i didn't even realize it look at you guys and all your iron ore very nice well uh, we, we're... We, we do have industry on easy i will admit that but after you know the old industry setup uh yeah we need a it, break yeah no and we it's, have it's, real jobs it's understandable <laughs> we don't have all the time in the world to run the game which is why we have the modes which you know easy is for people with no you know not a lot of time so, anyways, uh, we're going to sign off of this part of the stream here because the Passenger Car Tech Tree video is premiering in just a couple minutes here. And I'm going to jump in with everyone watching that. So, uh, thanks everyone for watching and uh, let us know if you like this. Of course, we have a Google form to submit your railroad if you would like to come join us on, the, uh, on these adventures and uh, have your railroad featured. Um, so, anyways, uh, make sure you find that and uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff that you do on YouTube. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone.